Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary's Church. Somehow there seem to be more people here than usual. It's, um, it's really lovely to welcome um, students from St. Mary's School, uh, as well as everybody else, as we gather in this uh, ancient house of prayer to worship God. Um, I hope that, if you haven't got a hymn book, that you have got uh, just a single folded page with the hymns on it. Um, they will become obvious as we go through the service. And then I hope everybody also has um, an order of service like this. Um, it, it continues in the usual way, whether there are words involved, um, they are for us all to join in with uh, together. We keep a moment of quiet as we prepare to worship God together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that uh, we can come into this special place to offer you our worship. Uh, and we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us, to enable us to praise you, to enable us to understand your word to us, and to feed us in every way that we need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I invite you to stand as we sing our first hymn, number 54, at the name of Jesus.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we keep a moment of quiet as we call to mind the ways in which we have failed God and failed our neighbour. The Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ as we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. And we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the glory. God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person, that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit for our readings from the Bible. A reading from chapter 8 of the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depth I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water, 
Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first, first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first chapter of the letter to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers or all things that have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself and all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 84. We stand to sing, Breathe on me, breath of God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become 
children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please be seated. It has just occurred to me that the last time St. Mary School was here was the, the choir, the wonderful choir, uh, carol service. And the last reading that was read was exactly the one I've just read now. We do sometimes have other readings than John chapter 1. Uh, but it just happens to be that way we've had both, both of those close together. I am quite excited about two uh, weddings coming up outside uh, Salisbury Diocese uh, that I've had to arrange special permission to conduct. My son is getting married next month uh, in Bath, um, which is very exciting. And um, then just after Easter, my godson is getting married near Bristol, and uh, his bride, actually, is Japanese. So, to make a bit, a bit of an effort to be hospitable to the Japanese guests, I've asked my uh, godson, who, who speaks Japanese himself, to give me some words of welcome in Japanese for me to say at the start of the wedding. I thought that, you know, a little bit uh, hospitable. And so, uh, just something like, hello and welcome to this wedding. So, uh, bear with me, because I, I, to my horror, I realise there, there may be some Japanese native speakers here. How about this? Konnichiwa. Ina de honwo de i taine. What do you think? <laughs> Except actually, what I just said was, hello, I wish I was at home reading a book. <laughs> but we don't know that, most of us, because uh, it's Japanese. Learning language is a fundamental part of what it is to be human isn't it? Spoken language, of course. Sign language for some. Body language, too, is part of how we show how we're feeling. And on top of that is the language of culture. For those who are under 20 here, there will be words that you use, or at least that you know what they mean, uh, that your parents or grandparents would be baffled by and I shall not make us cringe by attempting to say any of them. Uh, and all the time, brand new words are emerging. Um, every year, Oxford University Press has a Word of the Year announcement. And uh, in 2023, the word was riz. I don't know if anybody actually uh, uses that, but it stems from the word charisma, uh, and it means, as you'd expect, um, style, charm, attractiveness, the ability to attract a romantic partner. Language, then, is essential as we, uh, as uh, part of how we try to understand the world. But even with excellent language skills, it doesn't mean at all that we understand everything about the world, does it? And that struggling to understand the world may well impact on our faith in God as well. How can we believe in the love of God when we're faced with terrible human suffering, for instance? Whether it's the suffering of someone we love, maybe the suffering of ourselves, or the suffering of a whole people group at the hands of another people, or indeed suffering because of natural disasters. To have faith in God is to believe that God's intelligent and loving purposes are 
behind what we see somehow. But doesn't the world look sometimes like a completely random and meaningless collection of occurrences? Our reading from the Bible today affirm the goodness of creation and the goodness of God, but they do so in a way that requires us to take faith questioning really seriously. And that's because these readings say something about how God's creative intelligence has something about it that we can recognize. Proverbs in the Old Testament calls it wisdom. John's Gospel calls it the Word. And both Colossians and St. John call it Jesus. What language does God speak, actually? I know it may come as a shock to some traditionalists to discover that God's first language is not actually Thomas Cranmer's prayer book of 1549. Now, of course, God understands all language when we speak to him. But what is God's native language? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The language, the word that God speaks is Jesus. In our Colossians reading, Jesus is the image of the invisible God and all things are being created through him. If we want to know what God is like, we look at Jesus. If we want to understand the things that are important to God, we look at the life of Jesus. The reason we have a, a gospel procession, the re reason we go through all the trouble of processing it to the middle of the church, standing while we hear it read, is because the life and the teachings of Jesus are so utterly central to our Christian faith. And so what might we say that the life of Jesus is characterized by. So many things we might mention, but here's, here are some for starters. Jesus' life is characterized by compassion, including the outsider, humility in life, being part of a faith community. We see that in Jesus' life. Having a, will a willingness to confront what is wrong? Forgiving those who do us wrong. A call to true inner holiness. A calling out of false piety, false religion. An affirming of the commandments to love God and love our neighbour, even when our neighbour may actually be someone very different from ourselves. A willingness to endure suffering for the sake of other people. An invitation to follow in his footsteps. Learning the language that God speaks by following Jesus is the surest way to find our ultimate fulfillment. And that may well involve turning our backs on the things that the world we live in values the most. It's incredibly seductive to be drawn into chasing after things like qualifications, status, wealth, influence, for their own sake. But those things actually the opposite of the way Jesus lived his life. Now, qualifications and wealth and status and influence, they're not bad in themselves at all. In fact, God can use them Oh, wonderful good. But chasing them for ourselves, for their own sake, will probably lead us away from God rather than towards Him. God speaks to us in a language we are designed to understand. And He comes to us in Jesus in a form that at one level is completely familiar. And yet... The message of that famous passage of John's Gospel is that 
some of us still manage not to recognize him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not recognize him. And even for those who do recognize him, we don't actually get all our questions answered at all. Knowing Jesus, following in his way, he doesn't take away the suffering and injustice that we see so prevalent in the world about us. Actually, the answer Jesus provides to injustice is to call us to live in a way that confronts injustice. His answer to suffering is to call us to show practical compassion to those who are suffering. And to pray. Because prayer brings the transforming life of God into everything. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the language that God speaks. How can we learn that language better? Well, like any language, it needs us to practice by speaking it, by spending time with Jesus. Reading the Bible, yes, and also simply in prayer. This amazing gift of prayer that we have whereby at any time of the day, silently or spoken, we, our very spirits, can connect with the spirits of God in prayer. If you haven't really tried it lately, give it a go any time, day or night. May we learn to speak God's language of Jesus more fluently, that we might play our part in God's purposes. So that our small worlds and the whole world, with all its sorrows and its joys, might reflect more fully the love <clears throat> and the goodness of God. Amen. I invite you to turn to page five in the order of service. We're going to profess our faith in the living God. Would you please stand? And we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession.
God of wisdom, you proceeded forth at creation, bringing life to birth. Breathe that same potency into your church. We pray for Stephen, Andrew and Karen, our bishops, for this church and for all the churches in Khan. As children of your grace, bring us to rejoice in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of wisdom, you delight in humanity. Equip us to share that generous blessing in justice and peace. We pray for all who are working to bring a just peace in conflict around the world. For the people of Israel, Gaza, Syria, Sudan, South Sudan, Ukraine and Russia. Inspire with your wisdom all who lead and govern. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, you have set the world in a universe of order and intricate balance. Guide all engaged in the advancement of science and the ensuing ethical debates. It is through you and for you that we have our being. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, your fullness chose to dwell among us. Give us strength for all who are weak or whose faculties are failing. We pray for all who are ill, especially those who have asked for our prayers. We may sing our praises all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord of wisdom, in the cross you have reconciled your creation to you. Bring you into your peace all who have died. May we come to behold your fullness of your glory. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Stand for the peace. When we've said these words, you might perhaps like to just turn to your neighbour and uh, uh, greet them with a, a handshake or something like that, uh, just to share God's peace with those near to you. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another a sign of peace. Now we come to our offertory hymn. It is number 684. Thou whose almighty word.
about me. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you've created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, it is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for, the, for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when, when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ 
and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's presence among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. I will say the words of invitation, but just to explain um, how this will work. Although we celebrate communion um, here, we will administer communion at a higher level. Um, so if it's your, um, if this isn't your uh, church you go to all the time, um, but you normally receive communion in your church, wherever that might be, you are very, very welcome to receive here. Um, if that isn't uh, normally your thing, then do please, if you wish, uh, come forward for a blessing. And uh, if you bring a service sheet uh, with you, then um, I will know just to pray a simple prayer of God's blessing for you. Uh, and somebody will come and uh, advise you when it's time to, to move to the front. And we're very delighted uh, that the junior choir is going to be singing um, while we receive communion. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
God our Creator. By your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And at the foot of page 11, we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. stand for a final prayer. <clears throat> the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn, number 448, Meekness and Majesty.
to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.